Hello, today we're looking at the skeleton and the muscles in the body. So we're looking at the skeleton and the muscles. This is for key stage three biology. Often when we talk about these two working together, we refer to this as the muscular skeletal system. So these two working together is called the muscular skeletal or skeletal system. We're gonna see how this works together in a moment but first we need to know the important jobs the important roles of the skeleton so let's just label the skeleton over here this is the skeleton and right at the top of the skeleton as you may know is the skull so we can label the skull there this is the skull and another part i want to focus on is the rib cage which is made up of all your ribs because these two have a similar job they are both there for protection for protection the skull is there to protect the brain the brain is very delicate so the skull protects the brain and the rib cage will protect the lungs and the heart these need protecting so this is the role one of the roles of the skeleton for protection another role is to do with the whole skeleton together so if we take the whole skeleton and look at it its role is, or another one of its jobs, is for support. This means to keep you upright. To keep you upright, or the right way up, or to be standing up and not to fall over. So that's the second role of the skeleton. Another role is to do with movement. So bones work with muscles. The bones in the skeleton work with muscles in order to help you move. And we're gonna look at that in more detail in a minute. Bones work with muscles to help you move. And then one final role we're gonna look at, this one is sometimes forgotten, is the idea of the production, the production of blood cells. Some bones produce blood cells. So this is done in the bone marrow. Some bones have bone marrow which produce blood cells. Bone marrow, we should make a note, is a type of tissue, a type of tissue. If we were to look at a particular example of a bone, let's just say this one here, if we were able to slice it in half like this, you would see the inside uh, in that orangey kind of color, that's where you would find the bone marrow. So this is a kind of tissue that can produce blood cells, red blood cells and white blood cells. So that's another role of the skeleton. We do also have joints in the skeleton at different parts. So these are joints. And joints are places where one bone will meet another bone. So in other words, joints are places where bones meet. And this helps with movement. So these are the key roles of the skeleton. We should really make a note or at least highlight these. So one role is there for support to keep you upright, for movement, for the production of blood cells, and we've also mentioned protection. We do also have joints in the skeleton which helps the body to move and that's places where bones meet. Let's take a look at how the skeleton and muscles work together or how bones and muscles work together. Here I've got the bones and muscles in the arm. So we're gonna see how the skeleton and muscles work together. And we say that the muscles work in antagonistic, antagonistic pairs. What does that mean? Well, this keyword antagonistic, you should know this word. This means that muscles have opposite action to each other. They work in the opposite way. Well, again, what does that mean? Well, let's take an example of the muscles in the arm. The muscle at the top there and the muscle at the bottom, these both help to move the arm. The top one is called the biceps and the bottom muscle is called the triceps. And we can see here that the biceps has contracted. So the biceps will contract or well, the biceps contracts, in other words, gets shorter. So when we're talking about muscles, contracts means to get shorter, and the triceps relaxes. 
This is one way in which you can move the arm. The biceps contracts, the triceps relaxes. Very important to use the word relaxes as the opposite of contracts. Muscles do not or cannot stretch. I know in everyday language, before exercise, we say to stretch your muscles, but in reality, they can't stretch. So as a result of this, we see that the arm will bend. The result is that the arm bends. So this is how muscles work opposite to each other in an antagonistic way to bend the arm. So muscles for movement often work in pairs. They work in the opposite way to each other. One will contract and the other will relax in order to allow movement. So here we've got um, the muscles of the arm again, as we saw. For the first example, the top muscle, the biceps contracts, the bottom one relaxes, and that causes one kind of movement. If we look at the other picture of the arm, you can see that in this one, it's the opposite way around. The triceps or the muscle under the arm contracts and the top one, the biceps relaxes. So that's opposite to each other, that's antagonistic. So for the first one, the arm bends and for the second one, the arm straightens, the arm straightens. So really, really important to remember that muscles work in antagonistic pairs. So muscles work in antagonistic pairs and you must remember this keyword antagonistic. So let's just move that down there, highlight that. There we go. Important also to remember that this is not just the only place in the body where muscles work in antagonistic pairs. Uh, another example would be, for example, the leg. So let's just do a quick sketch of that. We've got the bone at the top of the leg called the femur. You've got the bones below the knee and the foot muscles. But here, in order to straighten and bend the leg, we've got a pair of muscles each working opposite to each other to bend and straighten the leg. You can also think about your fingers. So this, these are the bones in the fingers and there are pairs of muscles to move each part. Okay, so there's a pair over here and a pair over here working opposite to each other in order to bend the fingers. Lots of other places in the body as well where muscles work in antagonistic pairs in order to allow for movement. Okay, so that's basically it. We've got how the muscular skeletal system works. What we can do now is just a quick recap. So you might want to pause here and see if you can remember the four jobs of the skeleton. So pause here and have a little think. If not, these are the four jobs, not in any particular order. The first one we said was for protection. That was the skull and the rib cage that we talked about. We talked about support. We mentioned the movement and we mentioned the production of blood cells. That's both red and white blood cells. We also said that joints, these are places where bones meet, places where bones meet. And in order for movement to happen, we had muscles in antagonistic pairs or anti antagonistic muscles, key term there. And that just means that the antagonistic muscles work in the opposite way. In other words, one muscle will contract and the other, the other relaxes. So there's a little summary of what we've gone through today with the key terms highlighted. So we have the role of the skeleton. We have the definition or the meaning of the word joints when we're talking about the skeleton, and we have the way in which the muscles work to help the body move.